Hello my soccer universe, Winter is trying really hard to make a short comeback here and yes the mood around Lask is also really 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 frosty this is what most of the video will be about, I just need to get it out of the system a little bit uh, gutting loss this weekend at home um, in the sense that you could have really solidified third spot and now it's everything but solidified so not happy about that other than the Bundesliga we had a pretty big matchup between Sturm and Rapid the first of three within two weeks um, you know twice in the league and then uh, one in the cup final was probably a little bit of an overture but had a pretty big mistake in there that decided the entire game uh, we also had that in uh, the bottom half Austrian is really separating itself from the rest whereas Wolfsburg who potentially uh, were th eyeing the top spots are now in danger of being caught by the teams below and we also had no decision yet in the relegation battle uh, it looks looser now but it's not quite done there yet um, and yeah we had also a controversial penalty decision in Altdach against blau weiss Linz. but I, I really and please forgive me I wanna start at Lusk at the game that we were yesterday this time I uh, was with the kids and my father there and yeah after the big win against Salzburg I knew playing against Hartberg who Prior to the game, we hadn't beaten in 10 games. They are our bogey opponent. That's absolutely for sure. But it was also the table was, uh, there was a rapid loss. We'll talk about that uh, afterwards. I really need to get this out. <laughs> We had uh, so with this win, you could distance yourself from repeat five points. You also would keep Hartberg and Klagenfurt way down with no hope, and you would look very pretty in the race for this. Um, highly regarded third place spot which means at least you're going i think uh it is europa league qualifying it's not conference league qualifying but you know you're going some you're going places was not to be to be fair hardback is a team that keep it tight on the back this is always going to be trouble for lusk at least in the current situation, uh, you do, you see they are really hard to break down and they have a really good tactic and then making very quick counterattacks that are super dangerous. So uh, I give them all the credit. However, for the first 20 minutes of the game, yes, there was a chance by FDI that went wide, uh, Lusk pull, piled on the pressure and even had a CAC situation where they intercepted them, but they just could not get the shot off. And so it was a lot of um, control of the game and the hardback just defending. And it's the one counter attack where uh, Heil is then uh, on the edge of the box. He puts in a cross that falls into the net. Yes, there was the chance by FDI, but it really failed at this point. First shot on goal and it's in. And then the old problems came and then, you know, uh, what I don't get is whatever Lusk were trying to do, it was a whole lot of possession, but so much empty. Uh, player has has a pass, looks for an option, doesn't find one, plays it back or plays it sideways. And it was kind of this U-shaped uh, uh, attempt of attacking, what it really annoyed me. Whenever you could make it maybe a little bit faster, you step on the ball and you turn around and play it the other way. It was not quite yet so bad in the first half. I mean, there were uh, semi-chances there. However, you again get called on, on a counter counterattack and Entro basically wiggles himself through through defense and it's 2-0. Let's put it that way, the mood was not good. The referee was also, I mean, was a young referee. Um, don't want to put too much on him, but they, uh, towards the end of the first half, I think he lost uh, the plot a little, a little bit by giving unnecessary red, red cards and giving, yeah, was not the greatest performance there. And a game that was really nothing became suddenly heated, which was not necessary. That's at least my point of view. But I'm um, omitting the big one, of course, here. Uh, the mood was not good, but the mood was already not good to begin with because of the six band fans. The Lusk block, although fully present, said they're boycotting any organized support um, until those um, bands are lifted. 
you cannot imagine this eerie atmosphere in the stadium. And let me say it before, before I, I, anything else, I fully understand why they are upset. Though I said in the last video, those bands are ridiculous. The way they are handed down, yes, you maybe overstepped your lines in throwing stuff onto the field. If you just would have refrained from that and you know, maybe some other. But overall, the punishment does not fit the crime. It just does not. And this uh, this has to be very, very clearly said. And I put the most blame for the situation at the leadership of the club, especially uh, now CEO Kuruba, not president anymore. Uh, because let's face it, uh, if he would, if there was good and clear communication, and uh, you could see, and you could see a little bit more eye to eye. But at the moment, there's radio silence. It has been for a while. Uh, it's about missed. Uh, uh, you know, broken promises, all that kind of stuff. Don't want to go into it. However, there's one thing that I do not understand. I even understand you don't organize support because this is the only uh, power that the fans can bring. I understand that. But why you're not even clapping? Well, you know, I, I, to me, from the other side, it looks like they were standing there like mutes in their black jerseys. Just standing like mutes. Uh, you know, uh, you could put uh, mannequins there. Would be the same thing. I mean, when Ljubicic scored the goal uh, against Salsa, Salsa in front, in front of the block, they were all standing there. There was, you know, at least celebrate. You don't need to make chants. You don't need to make organized self support, but you can clap. You can uh, at least, you know, do something. But not even giving any support to the team. That's only hurting one entity. It's not hurting the president all the time, it's hurting the team. And you could see this, because suddenly, uh, you see there was nothing there. And I always think that support is overvalued, but uh, at least, you know, some positive support. The encouragement coming from the sides, you know, they're not organized. They will not make a, any, any mood. And it was even worse by the announcer when he announced the lineup, that um, after every player, you know, he says, he says the first name and then the stadium should say the last name. And instead of getting it done with, after every player, he left enough time to really let this silence seep in. Eerie. At least in the second half, uh, there were some, you know, some adjustments made. A goalie mistake allowed Flecker to pull one back. You really thought maybe there's something in the cards and the team were trying. We're getting some, I want to say, encouragement from the sides, but in the end, uh, Prokop comes on and a minute later, it was a really well-played attack by Hartberg, makes it 3-1. And then uh, everyone knew that the game is done. Everyone knew that the game, the game is done. It was again the same U-shaped attacking patterns. Really, really annoying loss because you saw how, in the, again, you saw the inability you again saw the total inability of the team to react uh, or how to break down such an opponent. And you play them again very soon. In fact, on Wednesday, uh, there will be more of the same. And this is, uh, this is what really annoys the heck out of me. That this is an opponent that you have not beaten, not beaten in 11 games. That you are better, even with a depleted squad, their injuries, you should beat this opponent. Uh, and then the whole situation surrounding the club that is toxic. It is absolutely toxic. It takes at the moment the fun out of everything. I mean, my little girl was more or less, she was, it's unfair, why cannot we change? They are chanting. Uh, the away fans, they are chanting, we cannot change. And, uh, you know, I had to move and I said, if you want, you can chant. Yeah, but they are not chanting. You know, how little girls are. Uh, you really had to. Uh, I had to encourage her a whole lot, but it really takes a lot out of it. I will still go because I enjoy, I, I did not enjoy watching it because I like going to the stadium, I like watching the game uh, unfold in front of me, but I think this is really something that's gonna hurt uh, in the end. And yes, I beg the leadership now. I mean, they absolutely need to, there needs to be a dialogue there to resolve this absolutely, absolutely toxic atmosphere that's at the moment surrounding the club. Uh, last point on the last game. Uh, there have been rumors that Lask is switching to Adidas. 
uh, the entire coaching staff was equipped in new Adidas gear. So I guess that's coming. Will be interesting. The other thing we'll ask need to step it up. We got an email today, uh, uh, the last week, not today, um, about you know the uh, new season tickets, blah blah blah, and. Uh, very vague email where I had questions and I say if you have questions please ask I sent an email I think it was on Tuesday I still have have not received a response it's also not good I also need to call this out you gotta do better let's talk about the other things that were happening uh, in the league um, as I said and I stay now in the championship group we had a pretty big one between uh, Rapid uh, uh, at going to Sturm uh, the game itself I mean Sturm had very few good chances, but the game itself, Rapid kept it tight. I was surprised how defensively they can play there. Um, and so it was already headed kind of for a nil-nil, although everyone expected something more, really fire fireworks. And then it was a shot that uh, a Hedl cannot hold on to. I mean, it's a really stupid mistake. He falls down, he loses the ball, he falls to Birith, who can run into the empty net. He's celebrating the moment he gets the ball because he knows there's no one that will stop him. It is one of those mistakes, yeah. Uh, I have to say, and I have to give huge credit to the coaching staff and the entire team of Ravapit. They know that their goalie, uh, this was, was a mistake, no one was a replay. They all came immediately to give him encouragement uh, there, so this tells me that there is a healthy team there. Uh, there were a few uh, instances where I think a repeat player could have gotten an injury. Uh, um, I also felt that Sturm were, you know, not playing with fully open cards yet because you play repeat again in the midweek and then a week later in the cup final. Uh, on the other side, you need to win to stay in the title race. Uh, really, really, really uh, off a little bit. It's really difficult to navigate, I think, a sequence of three games against a good opponent. Because if you play three times, you will not necessarily win three times unless you're Salzburg. That's, and even they at the moment don't do it. Uh, speaking of Salzburg, uh, they got, of course, the new coach. As I said uh, during the video last time, there were not only rumors. Uh, coach Ruhr got f announced to be fired already on Monday to replace by Onu Chinel, who is, uh, I think he was in the Youth Academy of Salzburg. Uh, and he's also the assistant to uh, Ralf Rangnick, the national team. So uh, a little bit of a curious appointment there. Um, he came in and similar like what happened with Lusk uh, in the past week, um, he got the uh, team going. They had a 4-2 win uh, over Klagenfurt, uh, took an early through Sucic. I mean, Klagenfurt get themselves back with a p uh, penalty in the third, 31st minute and also immediately concede two more in the 34th and 35th. 4-1 four, four, before the half, it's done. Yes, you can pull one back, but overall it was kind of a flat performance. It has to, has, 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 has to, has to be said then by Klagenfurt. And Salzburg get a win and take the top of the uh, league again. It is tight. They're level on points with Sturm Graz. It's five games to go. Uh, it will probably come down to the head-to-head, -head, which happens relatively soon. It also has to test with the head. Head-to-head, -head, I think, is um, right after the cup final. So this is actually disadvantage Sturm Graz. So uh, you got to see how this is going. It's um, really, really interesting at this very moment. It has, it has as we said, uh, Salzburg are still the favorites, I would say. However, I think the Sturm team is a better team than Salzburg. That's definitely something. And then let's end it uh, on, on the bottom half. I mean, uh, the big a big game was in Altach between Altach and blau weiss Linz, where Altach took the lead through a really, really awful penalty decision. It was a cross in the blau weiss Linz play is falling down. While falling down, he's trying to um, hold, hold, hold with his hands, and the ball, I want to even say why his back hits the hand really really bad penalty decision and then the referee saying uh, he felt that the player is extending his body to reach for the ball it's not true it's just not true uh, so very converted however a few minutes later Blauwes Linz also get a penalty uh, one of one of those you know two feet up both wanna get to, to the ball the defender wants to clear it and hits the striker to me that's also not a penalty but under the current law it's way more a penalty than the first penalty was on the wall to convert uh but louis uh re-establishes the all really have a sidle uh again a few minutes later and equal blau weiss is actually pressing 
a little bit more to get this wind that will probably would have given them also a really good cushion. It's only a 2-2, but hey, Blauers Linz is scoring again. They still have not won since they won the Derby in early November, so uh, that's also not a good sign. Not that Lask have won a whole lot, lot more since there as well, but you know, at least something. Austria Vienna actually had a really good performance against uh, Tirol, VSG Tirol, scoring also some really nice goals in the in, in, in the process through Gruber Fitz and then later on Huskovic. Uh, especially the first half, uh, VSG Tirol was not really present. But hey, that's uh, there. But Austria Vienna will win this qualification round and they will go into this um, playoff for the European spots. And the way they're going and building a lot of momentum. I mean, now they have as many wins, draws and losses as Lusk do, who are sitting in third. And yes, split being the league helps there. But the way they're going, I actually can uh, see them making it through these playoffs. I think both Vienna teams look a whole lot better than they did at the beginning of the, of, of the season. And this might actually show towards the end of the season. Gotta say. Uh, and then uh, Austria Lustenau. Um, out of nowhere, get an equalizer in the 45th minute after Jasic has given Wolfsburg the lead and then Wolfsburg is falling apart. And it was Lustenau who, who, who were pressing for, for a win. Uh, ahead of the game, I think if Lustenau would have gotten a point, they would have been really, really happy. I mean, nothing happened. And I think this is an overarching theme this round that nothing really happened in the big battlegrounds. Except that, you know, on the top it got a little bit tighter. And now here also uh, we have Wolfsburg falling a little bit back. But that point for Lustenau, yeah, you probably will rule some uh, chances. Because if you will, 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 will have gotten a win, then the draw that Blava has got in Alta would not have um, matter. You know, would have not been such a good result. So, yeah. I think relegation battle is not quite done. It's still pointing loose now because they still have a five point gap to make up. But in this way, the, the form, the thing, 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 going, it's a little bit harder to see it. So, yeah. We have a midweek round, the same fixtures, just turned, turned, turned on the round. Um, I don't know. I'm, I want the season to be over at the moment. And it's so weird because you're still sitting in third spot, but it doesn't feel like it. It really doesn't feel like feel like it, and I honestly think if the current form, yes, Salzburg's a win aside, and I think Lask will play easier against teams that are a little bit more open, like Rapid or Sturm. But then there's also a lot more quality up front, so you know it's kind of this catch twenty two situation. Um, maybe even Salzburg in the last game of the season. But to be honest. Uh, I don't see many more wins and I want to be wrong here. I really want to be wrong here, but I don't see currently many more wins. I don't necessarily see holding on to the third spot. But hey, I've been wrong before. Maybe in a month's time I'll be way more smiley. My biggest wish though is that the whole negativity surrounding the club, how the fans and the leadership are not seeing eye to eye, where it's radio silence at the moment, that this gets broken up. That the leadership comes down from the high horse and also that the fan club or the fans at least allow themselves to lift emotions you don't need to chant you don't need to have the flags but at least act like normal spectators don't act like mannequins that's my personal opinion let's see any case let me know your thoughts on all, all of this give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video talk to you soon but more things in my soccer universe i hope happier bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye